This is a test of the Bounty Park Alert System. Hello and welcome to this playoff confirmation special. Oh, hang on a minute. Sorry, wrong script there. Uh, welcome to this very disappointing uh, last week's football falling off the back of the Easter weekend. Hope you can all leave him loud and clear. Uh, we'll find out by bringing in this guy who's in, is it Azerbaijan? In, is a prison cell in Azerbaijan? Is it? Hello? Mm, hi. <laughs> How's the prison there, Dave? Yeah, it's oh, great, yeah. mate. It's black oh, sheep. Yeah. All right, yeah, we are the black sheep of the family, so they say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spit your beer out. <laughs> you all right? No, I uh, I swallow. I never spit. <laughs> no, beer. That's, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's what I heard. So, Dave, you having a, you're on uh, having a little break, aren't you? A holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, I've just played Monopoly um, and everyone was laughing at me because I was just on the cusp of bankruptcy and then my son landed on my hotels and he had to owe me 900 quid and he nearly got bankrupt himself. So uh, he Tor- lasts the, last, Tor- you knew last the longest. You were delighted, weren't you? Mm. So as, as your holiday, does your holiday mean that you were lucky enough to miss both matches? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I watched the highlights of Filed. Yeah. By God, what a display of defending and how not to do it. Yeah. Uh, saw the fond up legitimate tackle. Um, but I'll get on to why I think he gives the red card uh, later. Because he, he was a bad ref. End of story. <laughs> Move on. Um, no, it, it was it was due to the fact that both feet left the ground. So that is incited in the glossary of the terms of the laws of the game. Dangerous play. Although he won the ball. Uh, you know. and, he, and he didn't yeah I mean but this is our down to interpretation <laughs> isn't it um, if something mm. something's deemed dangerous or is dangerous you know I think there's yeah. a anyway um, <laughs> and then I watched Altrincham that was that really made me ask some questions of Mickey Mellon it, you know it was we, we've set up for a draw not to lose no ambition, no fight following a drubbing at home by a file where you want to see a reaction. Uh, and it confirmed one of my worst fears that when I said when he first came in that he's outdated tactically because they were shadows compared to Altrincham. They were head and shoulders above us in terms of positioning, pace, power, passing. They had it all and they made us look like Sunday League. It was so bad to watch. And they didn't get going, did they, Altrigam? Second really. They no. kept the contained us, didn't they? It was <laughs> it was no big deal for them to keep to keep us at arm's length, really. Uh it was it was so bad. And then saying, Oh, we did and we did well and we asked a lot of questions. Well, if the question was who's gonna win this game, Altrigam, <laughs> that was the question that we asked. Because <laughs> I'm going to say it was it was that bad, and it was we were so predictable in our play, so predictable in our approach. Harrison McGay, don't get me wrong, he ran the midfield. Now, if he's running our midfield, we've got serious problems because that guy is a central defender. He's not he's not he's not a central midfielder. And Conlon, you might as well have just sat him on the sidelines because he was absolute dross. You know, Hallam Hope in midfield with the best will in the world again. He's not a central midfielder. You know, and not having a striker on the bench as well. It, even with Reed and what he's done, it, the stubbornness of Mellon has caused us to to get the get the to, to get these results that we've got because everyone says, "Oh, well, he's done well." We've had the same set of players when we were when we were pushing for third. It's I think it's severely down to a management issue and something around the dressing room, in my opinion, because it, it can't just change overnight without something happening, and it's all since this read incident and it must be causing some sort of imbalance in the in the dressing room because it, it must be it, it, we, we've seen him come, come on the show seems like a nice guy what he did was wrong he's apologized for that he's still training so have someone still around there in the squad training it must be causing some sort of i'm not saying it's read or something it's caught it's something seriously wrong and it, it it's, it, it's, it's 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 point proven isn't it we've dropped out the playoffs weak as piss Nat's piss, aren't we? We have, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, this, right. this beer, this beer is stronger. I'll, I'll let you have a, I'll let you have a swig of your beer. We've we've got a, we've got a fan who's got in touch who um, has got friends in the playing staff at Filed, 
And so there's an interesting perspective there. So I'm going to bring him in now um, to the to the call. He got in touch. Uh, I've had a chat with him, so it's nothing uh, libelous or anything like that. But it's an interesting <laughs> it's an interesting perspective from the pitch. So hopefully you're there, Aaron. Are you there, mate? Yeah, man, mate. Okay. Yeah, how's it going? Welcome to the phone. Yeah, not too bad. Cheers, mate. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> You're a Latics fan. You've you've got uh, you've got some connections uh, in, uh, filed, and um, you've you've been in touch with with some of your, your mates, and uh, you, you just want to give us a bit of that feedback. Yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of mates who play for filed, so they're actually players. Um, and I can't really go into too much detail, as obviously you know, but um, they played. All three of them played on against Oldham the other day, um, and every time every time they played filed in the fight. The friendly, the game at their ground, uh, start of the season. They always message him after the game, just a little bit of banter. Um, and he basically, he, he just replied to me saying, uh, thanks, obviously, for the support. I can't believe he sent your player off. So that was just straight away. I didn't even ask him about it, didn't mention anything, and just come straight back with that. So I thought it was a bit, it's a bit interesting, considering he's probably the closest person, yeah. or one of the closest people, sorry, to the tackle. Um, so what, we don't, what, like, what we said, what we don't want to do is is get uh, bogged down in the fact that the, that the tackle changed the game. It did change the game, but we were it yeah, game massively by then as well. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, red card's going to affect their mentality as well, though, isn't it? Yeah. Than, I, thought he, played, he said I thought we played better actually after he got sent off. I thought we had more threat because it, it fired. Yeah, the well, the next, the next, yeah, the next, the next thing he says kind of gets that as well. So he just basically said he's probably a red to our player. Which is an interesting spin on it with what Dave said before. Yeah. Um, coming from someone who's actually on the pitch. So, yeah. Um, and then basically, he just went on to say, like, your fans are so toxic. So I've, I've obviously gone back to him and gone, do you get a bit of aggro off the fans and thinking they've given a bit of abuse? And he said, no, they give it to their own team so badly. <laughs> Which is obviously <laughs> quite interesting to hear from an opposition player that they're even picking up on. Obviously, the stuff, and I get, and I get, it, it's not, they're not playing well at the minute. And like Dave said before, I think it's got something to do with the Reed situation as well. But Possibly, <laughs> but we, we, we did pick up wins in, we did pick up wins in January and February. I mean, it's the worst yeah. month by a mile has been March. Uh, obviously, we've kept the form going in April now as well. I, th- I mean, Dave, we we've touched on it, haven't we, about the the fans. And, and the players and, and, and everything at Boundary Park. We've won six games at home this season. If it, Mark White mentioned it, didn't he? Last season, I think, about um, or mid-season, about players, uh, fans turning on players. Now, look, I'm not putting it. I'm not putting us not making the playoffs down to our fans. It's 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 on the players and the management, right? I'm not saying that it's on that, but I think it is. It is it is you know. It's obviously an issue. It gives it gives opposition players a bit of a uh, a boost, I guess, when they when they feel that the the, the haunt you can oh we can the home team are, are going to get you know get abuse here off their own fans. Go on, I, just want, I want to say it's Paddy Arwood's fault, Bradley Knowles' fault, um, Gaza Palooza's fault, and it's just them three is why we've, we've left the player. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, Brad, no, Brad's, I, I, Brad's in the queue so he can defend himself. <laughs> Uh, in, in no, I know. I thought it'd be odd. No, I, I just think again, it's it's not down to the fans, but it, it's certainly a factor our home form and you know the the levels of toxicity that I've experienced from the fans when they get on your back. It's it's, it's just gonna it's just gonna wear the opposition, isn't it? But I'm not saying that's the definitive factor. No, and so look, the fa- and we'll get other on, factors we'll get on to the conversation with the fans, like you know, the, with the callers about why we are where we are. You touched on it earlier on about the playing staff, you know, obviously recruitment and all that. So, you know, before anyone calls in or, you know, messages in and says, look, it's not, we know it's not the fact, we know it's not the fans fault. It's just an interest. I just think Aaron, it's a really interesting perspective yeah. from the pitch in it from an opposition. Yeah, there was, there was another, there's another thing he said as well. He was like, they improved a lot when they actually started playing football. He doesn't get why they just boot it up the field all the time. And it's, he said that after the last game as well at file. So obviously they, in my opinion, they knew how, I mean, obviously they should know how we'd play. And if you watch the docking, a bunch of amateurs think they knew exactly how old and played. But just, that, that, I don't know, that style of football just doesn't really work for me when you're just booting it up the pitch. 
But well, it's a team bereft of ideas, isn't it? That that he's doing that, unfortunately. And I think Mellon touched on it in his interview. I think in the second half against Altrincham. I mean, like the first half against Fylde, I thought they, they got booed off by a lot of fans and you can't argue with it. I thought they were dreadful on, in such an important match. Second half against Altrincham, they, they had a go. They just weren't good enough. It's like I said, I put a tweet out, they huffed and they puffed and they just weren't good enough to break down the Altrincham. The thing to me, the, the Altrincham game though is that he made one sub when they were, obviously, it was only one there. Why is that, it only bringing was... one sub on? You just... That, that was even mine. if you just go, yeah, you just even if you go like instead of playing four at the back, obviously I think we played three at the end, sort of thing. If you might just play three in midfield and put four or five up front. You, you, you go just go shit or bust, don't you? Shit or bust. Yeah. In that sort of game, you have to go for it. And if if you get a draw, you'll think flipping heck, we, we scrape that one. Or if you get you get a goal, you might get another because you know it just it just distinctly showed is a lack of ideas and, you know, you can't say, oh, we haven't got the players because you can still bang for, you can still bang five up front and get caught on the break and lose 2-0, can't you? Do you know what I mean? That, that was my... You'd rather lose 2-0 though than try. That's mm. my thing. But that, I don't get why he took Copa. Like, again, it's like the, the Rochdale game and he scored, obviously scored a few, didn't he? But, Look, we, we, I, don't, I, don't think we, I don't think we've got good enough players. Well, I mean, it's funny how you can say something clear as day and people still take it the wrong way. Paul <laughs> Lee, where you are. Like, I don't Paul know Lee's you, another one. Paul Lee's another one. That's it. Or something. But we said clearly we're not blaming the fans for this implosion. We're blaming the players and the manager. What we're saying is, is that there is, a, there is a negative aspect to Boundary Park which is not helpful and he may even be helpful to the opposition players. Like, I, I, we get this all the time like you know no it wasn't toxic against Chesterfield when the players were up for it absolutely not but the point is is that like sometimes the players aren't going to be performing well but we turn on them uh, as a as a as a as a rule a, a fan base too easily um and and I think there is an issue when people can say oh well we pay our money we have a right to more than all that because fair enough but I mean, there is an alternative argument that if you turn on players too quickly you don't get the best out of them and it might give the opposition an extra an extra boost that they don't need this season because we've got our players and our manager our managers because we've had three this season haven't performed and, and got us the results that that we need so we're not just focusing on the supporters like, are you are you fucking stupid or summer listen to what we're saying Jesus Christ honestly are you are is you, that James 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 whoever James is but like we're not focusing on the supporters we're talking about something that came from a player on the old Altrincham pitch, right? Saying file, that... File it's, sorry, on the pitch against Fylde, the Fylde <laughs> player that picked up on it, and it's something that that, that that is relevant to that game. Now, against Chesterfield, fans were great. Second half, I thought, against Altrincham, when, when the players started to sort of like have a go, the fans responded. It's, a, it's definitely a two-way thing, but there's an issue at Boundary Park. It's not all we talk about every week, James. You try coming on here and talking to Oldham fans every week. Why don't you call up and tell us what you think and you and you give us your insight, yeah? It's like, it's, it's all too easy to pick, point fingers and pick on. We're not picking on it. It's, it's a collective thing and it, there's there's more to it. I, I've, I'm losing my rag me at the end of this season. I've had enough. It's, it's, you're, like, you're like party trying to break down. On, 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 I know, on, on, I know. Off, yeah, I'm, going to drive, I'm going to drive to Dundee and bare feet in a minute, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> just just another one for me. I don't think we're ready to go up this year anyway, to be honest with you. I think if we go up, we'll come straight back down. I mean that depends on what you do in terms of in terms of business, doesn't yeah, it? Like obviously, you know, yeah, it's not like that. But yeah, as it is, the team that we've got now, well, if it's not ready to go up, it's not ready to stay up. So we, exactly. that seems to be the thing. <laughs> right, we've got loads of callers, Aaron, but thanks for that perspective. No, it's mate. Really, uh, Anytime. All right. Cheers, mate. Right. Take care. Right, we better be bringing Brad in now since you've um, you've given him um, you know you've called you've, you've called him out. So if the right to reply, Bradley. <laughs> Oh, it's your right, fault, and uh, Paddy Howard's fault. Which I mean, I'm fine with. I'm fine with that. But you, you, uh, you, you can defend. Oh, I completely it. disagree. I completely disagree <laughs> about altering you. I thought we first half we weren't too bad. with tight. You can't legislate for Sutton doing what he does. An absolute brain fart. To couldn't be bothered getting back in line, and then absolutely decides to not bother clearing the ball. You can't legislate for that. In the second half we played well. I thought I thought we weren't too bad against Altrincham. I know we got beat, but Altrincham form team in the league and sit fourth in the league for no reason and just just better than us at the moment and 
Yeah, they, 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 was, they was a good team. and But like I said, on the about fans and stuff like that, I understand fans have a right to go and do what they want to do because they pay the money. But it, they need to, it's every week, though, with it. Uh, they boo every week and it's getting... It's lost its uh, appetite there. Like Dagenham, it was no, no. People booed and no, there was no part in it. And then Monday, Friday, certainly I understand why people were booing because it was an absolute shit show. Then Monday, they were seeing not fit to wear a shirt and booing it 1 0. It was against the team who were fourth and in form. Just there needs to be a bit more perspective with it that it happens yeah. we get beat. <laughs> Do you think um, Coltrane got out of second gear? Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they've. I think we. I think the way we played uh, stopped them playing. I think McGee had another great game against them. Uh, he should have scored really. We were right in front of the fans. Uh, all he had to do is put it in that bottom corner. We just went for power. We had chances. Common could have played in three. They've balls across the box. It's we've been missing. Like I said, I think I said to yourselves on Twitter. I think if we do not get the playoffs this season, it is a failure, an absolute catastrophic failure. With the money being spent, we must be the biggest spenders in this league. It's, I think it's on the board with the recruitment and giving Unsworth too long. There's two teams in the league who are using stat-based recruitment, us and York. Both of them have had piss-poor recruitment and gone through a few managers. Brad, can, uh, I, can, I, just bring a point, can I just make a point on that, actually, yeah. now you mention it? Because I've, I, this is something I picked up on. You know, when you listen to Mickey Mellon's interviews, some of his post-match interviews and pre-match interviews, we've heard him say that he knows what, it, what, he knows what makes a good player and he can see a good player. And he's, I've picked up that possibly his approach to recruitment might be slightly different to that stats-based one. And, that, he, and yeah. that maybe there's some frustration from Mellon. Now, this is all just something that I'm sort of reading into things, no confirmation of anything, but that maybe he's sort of like, because of the recruitment that we've got, because of the players that we've got, they just haven't aren't up for it. And some of his language, I know what it takes of what a good player looks like and things like that, and kind of that we're yeah. going to see different types of players coming in from you know over the summer where Mellon's got his own way of doing it rather than this stats based approach which to be honest with you over the last couple of seasons you can say hasn't worked very well exactly I think we I think we tried running before we can walk on that front I think maybe if you're a league one league two team you might it might look a bit better but not in the national league where you need to like know a lot more in depth about the character of the person and stuff like that. And I think we've still got ahead, we've got ahead of recruitment now. Like He made a point on his interview, Mellon, where he went, oh, uh, we, we, we probably haven't got a right back. But then we sat there and not played Bromley. I thought he was excellent against Bromley. He's not been seen since. Man of the match. Yeah. He was man of the match. Exactly. Really. So I, I don't understand what's happening. Are people still recruiting for us? Have we got ahead of recruitment? I think, I'm, I'm imagining that some we did get someone from Forest Green or someone like that. And, He's not happy with what he what he's being brought in, uh, but yeah, it's it's just a whole collective responsibility of a failure, like from the ball of recruitment, keeping on with manager. There's no doubt. Mellon said it in a few interviews where he said, "Oh, with uh, when where we where we came from uh, when I took over." No, Mellon, you we were third in the league. You've had us in the playoffs since January. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We won in we won one in ten. It's not good enough. It's it, it, we're not saying sack him. I'm not saying sack the board, sack the manager or sack players, it's just a collective responsibility of a shit show from them all. How, how yeah. it's more than likely going to be a failure. These are the times where, you know, when you bring in a manager like Mellon with his track record and, and you look at it and you say, been there, done it. It's when you get into like March and you're in this position when that experience is yeah. really supposed to show in it, you know, where you're in the top six, you're, 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 in, you're in control of your own destiny. Uh, you supposedly got the players at your disposal. And so it has to it has to look like a failure from that point of view. One of the things that you were just talking about, Brad, you talk about the Altrincham game, which I just wanted to pick up on as well, was the strikers have stopped, stopped scoring. We're, we're not scoring goals. Like, when was the last time that James Norwood, like, just got the ball and did something and scored a goal, like, in open play, for example? He just doesn't look like he's going to chase no, the game. You just, the, game the, the, the last time he scored in open play at home was at Oxford City in September. You know, that's insane. That was under Thompson. That, that's that is mental. I didn't even think about that. I know he's last one open play. That's in open play. Yeah. yeah, but that's that, September. That was September. Yeah. Well, we've just yeah. got yeah. to the boil when it comes to goal scoring, and it's and it's it looked like when Gar- Garner and Fondot were up top together, they were, when Norwood was out injured. Um, we haven't won a game since Norwood came back into the side. No. So that's can another I, interesting point. Can but I just I, add what, something? Can I add something on Norwood? Um, no, I can't say the sources. 
but they said they were, and they are a manager. That's all I'm saying. They said they wouldn't have him anywhere near their team because his attitude is absolutely rotten. He said he calls young players out. He's a bit of a bully. Uh, he's not. He, he brags about how much money he's on in front of other players. And he said they would. They wouldn't even dream. Even if he got got if he got given to him, they wouldn't take him because he's that bad. And this this manager has been there and done it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to go any further than that. But that's 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 from the that's from the horse's mouth. That. But, but uh, you know it's. I like, I, like I like Norwood. I like I like Norwood. I don't I don't think it's worked out for him here. Uh, but <clears> I think <throat> the problem is that there was a player who we were going to sign in August who came to watch us against Halifax, and he there, there, there were messages going in between him uh, this player, and he said, "Oh, we've got we've got James Norwood," and the player replied, "Well, there's no one to feed him. He's not going to score you thirty goals if nobody's to feed him." And he's not having he's not no one behind him to create a chance. We got we don't play with any wingers. We don't we play with any pace. Balls aren't going into the box. We're just not creative. We're not creative enough. The midfield is a problem for like for the last two seasons. But well, I, I was, I was frustrated. That, I was hoping we were going to see some um, Conlon getting on the ball and you know setting up Norwood and giving well, things exactly, to run and that kind of stuff. Exactly, but it's not happened, has it? Exactly. It's just, it's just nothing from us. Like the players again. I'm going back to the collective field. The players only get up for it when they want to. Like the Chesterfield game. It, it all came out. We got beat. We were sorry. We were due to all. We were two 0 up. Any other time, fans would be kicking off, wouldn't they? Uh, too. But we, it, we, everyone took the positive. And said that we played well. We tried. And then next week, the performances dropped. That was the bar which had to be set. And yeah. the players aren't doing it. I, I feel sorry for Dallas as well. He's I know he's coming. He's not fit. He's not been fit. He's getting to fitness. He is trying to do things. He is running with the ball, trying to pass it about and. It, it's just not working, and like like you said, Fond up and Dan, it should have been the first first two. We should have kept with them, and until like you said, we didn't we didn't lose we didn't lose many, did they? And they were scoring goals. No, no, I know it's it's there's a you, there's a lot of things that have that have not gone right this season. You know, it's 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 not been a good season. We. We can still make the playoffs. I know people are saying it's over, and it probably That's is. The thing. We're, still, we're, we're, we're last... in 10th, and we're no. still five points off, and we could still yeah. put 10 together. If we win our last four games, we'll probably make it, but the chances of us winning our last four games are so small based on, on the last 10 games, like you said, Brad. So it is, you know, but I mean, at least we're going into the Roch, uh, Rochdale game with a possibility of making the playoffs. But, I mean, if we lose, if we lose on, on Saturday, that's it, isn't it? If we yeah, win we, like, our next four games, I will dress up as Freddie Mercury every week on next season's fawning. Right. It's not going to happen. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants that anyway. Uh, you, yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, because this team, you just don't know what you're going to get from them. Uh, and that, that's the thing. You just, you just, there's just no consistency with them. And it's just so frustrating. They've, and I don't know like, say, how Frank must be feeling. So since he's come back, we've, we've only won one, haven't we? That was, that was, his, was his first game was at Kidderminster. Anyway, I saw him at Eastleigh, but... I mean, I, what, look, what look, on earth is this? When Norwood came in, he, he, you know, he was he was sold a dream, wasn't he? That, you know, we're going to win the league. Are we just, you know, but obviously it's not happened. He's part of that um, reason that it's not happened. Maybe um, fans' expectations were sort of raised a bit too much. Maybe you know the way that the first two the first two seasons have gone. It, it's a really difficult dif- difficult thing to to balance. You throw a few quid at it. We've not thrown anywhere near as much money as the likes of uh, Wrexham, Notts County, uh, Stockport did. But they, they it took them longer to get to that point where they were throwing so much money at it. It's you kind of damned if you do, you damned if you don't. I understood the. The thought process behind someone like David Unsworth coming in, coming in, supposed to be a young manager working with the youth team and stuff. But I think pretty much that the expectation was we'll be out within three seasons. And then when that was obviously not working under Unsworth, they brought in Mellon, as presumably as a someone they think can get us out of this division either this season or next season. If we don't go up next season, then we're in a bit of a different territory then in terms of the spending and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're all desperate for us to go up. And, exactly. We are. I, I didn't right. I didn't expect us to go up this season. I thought a playoff campaign would have been acceptable. If you don't know what happens in the playoffs, especially this level, where it's one game and you got to play two away potentially, and obviously, and then got the final. But just missing out completely, it's just absolutely not good enough. And it's mm. it's it needs to be a long, hard summer of looking at themselves and hit, hitting that ground running because we cannot win to next season where again. Where we win one in nine, and we 
because especially with the way we finish this finishing this season, we were we were season one in nine. Then the fans will be calling for Melon's head. Then so it would have been a long a long time, would it, before since the last win. The problem is, Brad, is we we started the season badly. We we picked up some ground in the middle of it, and now we're ending it badly. So exactly, yeah. We we starting it. We're ending it like we started it. Next season, we have to. Our playoff credentials need to be there from the start. We need to be in the top six all season next season. We really yeah. need to sort of start with intent, and there needs to be a, a an obvious improvement in terms of personnel and attitude and, and ability at the start of next season because yeah. it has to keep building. It has to keep it has to keep getting incrementally better. Now, I think that we, if we make the right signings, there's, 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 there's enough decent players in the squad to, to start um, you know, well next season. But like Ryan says here, there, there is a lot. You've said it yourself, Brad, before. There is a lack of pace all over the pitch. There's no. We look at we look at players from from other teams every week who who've got the ability to get the ball, drive it forward, get us on the back foot, pass and move quickly, get up the pitch quickly. We 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 struggle. We're every slow. Week. We're, we're slow pedestrian. We just yeah. we just don't. How many times do you say break it? We don't break forward. And we don't counter attack. It's just when we do play a bit of football, we're not too bad at it. But we just go to the long ball. We slow it down. That's from Hudson taking a goal kick. Or balls going to be slow to pass it, and then pass out to the centre half, and they'll just pass it around. It it's just not very good, and it's slow on the. It's, it just it just bores you, and that's why people get pissed off. I think at home games. Yeah, Especially yeah. We, we, telegra- we tele- Sorry, we telegraph everything in terms of our play, our positioning, whatever we do. There's no the only team, the only game I saw where we we, should, we, we looked. Where we had that movement was hardly pull away because they couldn't contain us because we had Josh uh, Josh Stones doing those sort of flicks and Norwood doing all the movement because they were running behind the lines. But hardly pull away is the only game I've seen where we, we looked rather attacking and very very dangerous. You know, Barnet was 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 away was all all the given because they played the high line because Barnet played that, that sort of risk free yeah. approach of yeah. defence. But Hartlepool was like, they were quite hard to break down in the first 10 minutes. But when we did, then we started to play it in a different way and we were absolutely unbelievable. But other than that, I've not seen, other than exactly. York and Holm under Thompson, where we broke the lines again. But that was Thompson, weren't it? Do you know what I mean? I've not yeah. seen anything. But, Brad, we're going but to need again. to move on in a second. So have you, got, have you got any words of wisdom or inspiration for the for the Latix masses before, before we move on? Just Boom. win games. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. I don't start it. Yeah, I think we'll beat Rochdale, Brad. Yeah, I think we will. I think we'll we'll get false dawn again. You know what it is. We'll we'll win this game. We'll win. We'll go two points behind all the shot. Everyone will get for the all we get in playoffs. Beat Halifax and then go to Oxford City and get beat. Yeah, probably. And it's just typical latics. Well, as as long as we beat Rochdale, that's the start, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. All right, thanks for getting in touch, mate. Bye, Paul. Bye, bye. Take care, Paul. Right, okay. So we had James on before, and it was I had a bit of a rant at what he was saying. So <laughs> we said call in, and he has done. To be fair, so once you stick your video camera on there, James, you can join the chat. Here he is. All right, Hi, guys. How yeah, are how's you? it going? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Are you, listen, are you, are you one of those fans that's to blame for our own form? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking sing all game and get behind them and they do fuck all, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, listen, to, to be fair, you guys do fucking brilliant. You know what I mean? We're having a go. It sounds like it over a text, doesn't it? You know, when you put it on, it's like a statement, that's you know what I mean? That's why it's a, that's why it's a phone, so we can have a chat. That's, it is better that way, like, to have a, have a chat over it, innit? I mean, what do you think, though? I mean, like, it's it's it, look, it's really hard to get behind the team this season because they're... they're, they're they're just not getting us anything to get behind, and I and I I don't personally have a problem with fans collectively sort of have groaning, moaning, shouting. You know, it's it's personal attacks on players, and when it gets a bit nasty, that that I could be saying it all season. There's a line I think that uh, you know that you shouldn't cross, and I think maybe sometimes people are crossing that line, and 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 that's yeah. having a negative effect Absolutely. on our players, and and maybe giving other teams a like, hang on a minute, this is you know it's giving them a boost, that we don't need to give them any more of a boost because. It's their cup final most of the time when it comes to us, anyway. Yeah, I think I think, it, I think I, people like myself when we hear it, it's just like oh, supporters. It's always the supporters. I'm not. I know you're not blaming all the supporters. It's just that I'm one of them supporters who's sitting and watch the road and that sing all game and get behind the team, and I feel like we get absolute fuck all back from them. They don't even try. I mean, I saw Mark Kitchen in Manchester today, and I felt like throttling him. <laughs> I really, really did. You know, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't, and I, and I couldn't say anything to him. I just looked at him and he looked at me and he, he fucking knew. He, he must have knew. He just put his head down and carried on walking. He didn't know me for Adam, but you know what I mean? And I just, it's like him, players like him, he's got all the ability, but every fucking week now, since Christmas, since, since the Alex Reid thing, he's a different player. He doesn't try and make the runs. There's acres of space in front of the guy and he doesn't even run. He just turns back and passes it back to the, the defence. It's unacceptable, but he knows he's on drop. He's drop. We can't drop him because there's no one no, else. I know. Yeah, we've no other left back, have we? I it, think. I mean, it drives me mad. I think. I mean, the, I could get a pub team together. I know. I know lads that could play Oldham for at least half an hour and destroy them. The only thing they win on is fitness. They don't play between the lines. They don't move for each other. The only one. I mean, Norwood is. I mean, he's got his flaws. Don't get me wrong. The only one that makes movement is Norwood, and they're so slow. He's got to make a run twice. And then gets caught offside. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't get he doesn't get the ball when he makes the run, does he? He makes so many wasted runs, doesn't he? That is definitely true. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think the problem I think the problem is, James, is one of the things that I worry about is um t- fans taking out their own twenty odd, thirty odd years of anger, <laughs> of anger on on one individual who's been at the club for five minutes. That does, yeah. uh, you know, it, and it doesn't do that individual's career any good. It doesn't make him want to no. play. For no. and things like that and I, I think we, we can all get caught up in that because of our frustration and our yeah. and, and such a long time and you know there, there are young players that come in Will, Will Sutton alright he was at fault for that goal at the weekend you know he he, he didn't get up I, to I, I don't know Will Sutton I think he gets too much shit yeah I think he's got bags of potential whereas other fans just want to seem to like give him loads of grief all the time and so I, I just think like well one of those things is going to help him and one of those things is going to hinder him and it's pretty obvious which is which so you know, I think especially when we're talking about people playing for the shirt and we're talking about passion, the, the, you're going to get more passion and more out of a of a young lad that's come through the system and has been at Oldham and it, Oldham means something to him than somebody that yeah. is coming in at the end of their career. So the, especially the young lads, we've really got to get behind them. Like he is, he's got he's a good prospect, isn't he? I think. Yeah, I I, I don't understand that. Some of the fans that go, like, say getting on his back. All right, he balled up at weekends. So what? But I mean, he was the only one that got back. None oh, of the rest, he, none of them got back. He was near at goal line than everybody else. Because oh well, yeah, he did play everyone off. <laughs> well, he was. Yeah, he did play back. everyone off. But, yeah. but the point is, they all they all took the time getting back. If he did get his foot to it and block it, they'd have probably scored again anyway. Because no one was back. No, there was loads of there were loads of options for them, wasn't there? Yeah, they, 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 yeah that's what's an attitude problem with them. You know, after players, it's just it's all. Let's do the easy thing. Let's let's play a side ball. Let's go back. Let, they don't try. It's. I mean, I don't care if we get beat six 0 You know, I, I I remember when we got beat seven one by uh, Cardiff City at home. You know, I, I can't remember yeah. was it now. Was it Gorham? It now. Yeah, yeah. Gorham. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Saint Chaddy end. And I remember the place empty. Now I sat there with my feet up watching, having a good laugh. Cause we were that shit. But you know what? We were still trying. Yeah, we were. We were. I remember you know, the game very well because it was Dowie. Was it? Uh, was it? Was it Dowie? I think it was Dowie, weren't it? They yeah, still had yeah. And he came out. He said, "Look, it's just what it was. Just a bad day at the office. You know, they still yeah. went gone. But there's not. A, they, they, they're just so weak mentally. I think. I think we've got a real problem with the, the mental side. Well, the big occasion. The, uh, that's what bothers me. I say they're bottling. This might, might not be that they're not trying or whatever, but it's the mentality. They've not got the strength of character to put in a performance when they need to put in a performance as a team. They, they proved it again on, on Friday against Fylde, proved it against um, Kidderminster. You know, big games that we should have won. We should we should be easily yeah. in the playoff now, uh, playoff spots now with, with some of the ridiculous points that we've dropped. Um, Walking. It's oh yeah, it's all it's all it's all up here. It's all in the in the collective psyche. And a lot and you know the reason we got you on and, and the, the fair play to you for getting in touch was we're talking about this this whole collective thing. That's what we've been talking about. It's dead easy to point fingers at managers, to point fingers at players and individuals. Anyone who pops their head up above the parapet on <laughs> social media, people are like, oh, it's your voice, your voice. It's <laughs> you know, it, it's not. We're not saying that people shouldn't have a you know shouldn't be annoyed, shouldn't let the frustrations out. We get all that, of course yeah. it is. But like, at what point does it become counterproductive towards the overall rebuilding of this football club, which is ultimately what we're trying to do? We all want to be part of the the rebuilding process and feel like we're helping. And that that's yeah. all that point we keep raising over yeah. and over again. I think we're just trying to reiterate that really. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I agree. I mean, on Friday, I uh, I, I mean, I, 
The only away game I've ever left early was Macclesfield away. And I don't know if you all remember that, but that was grim. I was there with me at the time, six-year-old lad. And I just we had to go. I just couldn't, I couldn't face it. And the only home game in 30 years I've left was Friday. It was 3-0. We just got up and went. Because mm -hmm. if not, I probably would have given him shit. And I don't give him shit. You know, I really don't. I get behind them. But I, that was my protest. Yeah. And that's, you know, and, well, that's that's completely fair enough. Like, and that's how it should be. You know, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be spitting venom. You know. Look, I mean, I, I lost my rag on Friday. I was I was really angry. Off, but by half time on Friday, I was livid. I was, I, you know, mm -hmm. it, and because we're all this, we're all no one's, you know, no one's claiming to be a saint and casting other people as devils or anything. We're all we've all got our breaking point, and you know, when they didn't turn up again, for mm -hmm. you know, I, but I tend to give my 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 frustration was the whole team it's rather than individuals and I, I think that's okay i think if the team playing poorly you know you give out to the team that's okay but because you've only you we have only got breaking point and 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 six wins at home this season when it's just yeah. a, is it and no wonder we're all yeah. exasperated now and we've all had enough <laughs> we're all looking forward yeah. to what's bringing what, some what, break what's your thoughts on melon james i He's not beyond criticism, and he's not beyond praise. But That's I, I James, think he's the MP for Right and West. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 he's one of the reasons why we're not in the playoffs. That's what you know. That's what I'll say. He's not. He's not yeah. on his own. I, but I'm fully behind him. Um, he, these are not all his players. Most of this mm -hmm. squad are not his players. In the summer, he gets judged. Fully next season, With, without any back, you know, back up, he can't. You know, he, he can't blame anyone else. He'll like, he'll get rid of players and he'll have his own in. But I think he does need time. We, if we sack another manager now, then we're not going up for years because either way, it comes out of the budget, doesn't it? So yeah. we're still paying. We're still paying for under us. Yeah, exactly. And I think but, we've signed. I think uh, uh, Mellon's responsible for seven out of thirty-two signings that you know that we've got yeah. currently so you know you need to and like i said before to brad i think the the way we recruit and you know the whole stats thing and and, and melon's gonna have to take control of that recruitment process and bring in players in the way that he feels is the best way to bring them in with the team at the club because it's not been it's not been working out we've just got we've ended up exactly where we were last season which is with loads yeah. of and, and under Lemsigans really which is loads of players none of you know not, we've not enough of them good enough yeah no Gav, substance Gav's my mate made a good point today he said the, t the players who Mellon has relied on mostly are Hogan McGay Sharon Fondop and, his, and Gardner and they were signed yeah. under Sheridan, mm. so it just goes to show that yeah. you know the the drop. Well, well I, I actually thought that the Sheridan team was better than the Under team personally, and that was a shit team. You know, mm. I, don't think we, I don't think we've, I don't think we've improved at all in all the players no, we've been to. No, no one's brought an improvement, hasn't it? Well, in, at, yeah, the odd in, I mean, individual improvement, maybe like an individual, but as a team collectively, I mean. I don't think there's been any improvement, really. It's... I mean, just look at the just look at the way we've you know we've bundled through March and uh, started April. It, it's it's not yeah. just the results haven't been going for us. The performances haven't been there as well. And yeah. you know, like I said before, you, you've when you've got experienced players that have been there and done it, and experienced management team that have been there and done it, it's, it's in these months that you expect to see evidence of it, and we just haven't. Yeah. So it's it's been collectively. Yeah. Um, like like I said, I think I think Mellon is a lot to blame. With our current situation regarding the playoffs, player selection, you know, like so, you can't you can't have a settled team? I don't understand that one bit. If, if your player's not injured and he's available, why is he not playing? Tinkering too much for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, he should be. He should, he should be answering these questions. Should be asked. He should be. He should be answering we'll get, these. We'll, we'll get him on the pod. In, we'll, we'll, we'll get him on the pod in, in between. Um, in the preseason, before the start of the next season, we'll sit down with him and we'll, we'll give him a good grilling and uh, we'll just badger him until he says yes, what we have. Give, give him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going to move on, but I appreciate your call, James. Thanks for getting right, Cheers, boys. Keep Great up the good call, work, mate. yeah? Yeah, take cheers, care, take care. Bye. Fair play to the guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, we've got people waiting. You're very patient in the back there. We've got two Jacks and a Nibby. I don't know. Nibby, do you know, do you know anyone no, I've called Nibby, Dave? Him. No, never, never heard, heard of him. Him. And uh, we're, we're bringing Dave now because Dave's not been uh, not been on certainly for a while. If, if, um, how are you doing, Dave? 
I'm good. How are you, lads? You all right? Yeah, good. Oh, thanks. yeah. I'm absolutely yeah. buzzing. Buzzing to the max. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt's yeah. gone to uh, Grand Jill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How are you, so, Dave? How are you, Dave? Yeah, I'm good, lads. I'm a bit pissed off that I made the effort to go to both games over Easter. Got no points. Brought mates with me to either game. Shit show for both of them. Um, but, you know, the, the trips on the whole were good, so can't complain too much. Um, but, yeah, I've agreed with a lot of what people have said already, what Brad said and what, what James has just said. Mellon's got to take his share of the blame, but we, we can't keep having this attitude of chopping managers, changing managers all the time. I, I said it at the time that I think Mellon is our best ever managerial appointment. And I know people will have gone on and done better things, but I think he's the only manager we've appointed who's done something at a higher level. We always get an untrusted or potential manager who's young and unproven and we have to see if it works out or it doesn't. With Mellon, and they had a long recruitment process. Thompson was in charge, what, six games with and, yeah. and Redfern came in and then Muzza did a game. You know, so they, they did their homework and I was I was really happy with the appointment. And we've we've got to stay happy with it. It's I, I don't like the sort of change in the narrative that we were miles off the playoffs when he came in because we because we weren't and we all know that. But I did say at the time, once we'd sacked Unsworth after nine games, I posted on Twitter saying basically we're not going to make the playoffs. And I'm not saying I told you so. And I think as soon as we got into the playoffs, we were in there fifth looking comfortable. You know, I retracted my comment and said, I'll see you all at Wembley, lads. But over the course of a season, to maintain that level of sort of points per game and form over the course of a season is a big, big ask. And I know we're in there at a point, and you could argue that was our form time and this is our out of form time. So I think it would have been a big ask overall. But even if you did had Mellon full season points per game, we probably only would have had three or four more points. So we, we you know, we wouldn't be too much better off. But I, I think I don't even think we win all four. I, I let me rephrase that. I don't think we will win all four because we've not done it all season and we are so inconsistent. To win four in a row is is big enough for any team, but for a team that is severely lacking in confidence, um, it, it's just it's too much to ask. So I'm I'm bracing myself and I'm, I'm you know I've still got my free cancellation Wembley hotel booked <laughs> um so I'm not cancelling it just yet but I'm bracing myself that we'll get a summer of recruitment get some some of Mellon's players that he wants in and get a bit of get a bit of different profile in the squad because we've, we've we've covered it all anyway literally no right backs in the squad there's no backup for Kitchen Kitchen is doing Kitchen's out of form He's not in competition and he basically covers that whole left-hand side. So he can't be taken out of the firing line at all because there's no one to back him up. Um, and he's getting exposed on the left wing and at left back. Got no wingers, got no pace. On on Monday, they set up with that 4-1-4-1. And the reason why I think Hope and Dallas were out wide was just so we could have a bit of potential for, you know, 4-3-3, three, three, if you want to call it that, going forward. But it just didn't play out like that. Dallas, too many times, was coming into the middle and Mellon was screening at him to get back out wide. He switched the wings between Dallas and Hope in an attempt to mix it up. I know he didn't make many changes. He only brought Lundstrom on. And I thought he would have brought him on for Conlon, to be honest. But the... Sorry about my cat. <laughs> uh, so he brought... Lundstrom on, and I thought it was a bit of a token gesture, to be honest, because it was altering yeah. him. And it was too late in the game. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he fancied Ward, so I didn't think he was going to come on. Hobson's a centre back. Um, well, you know what you, you were saying before about that formation with the um, Norwood was very isolated up top on his own, wasn't he? And and, and there was gap. Ma- massive gaps in between him, him and the wider players. The one player who would have got up and supported him from the midfield and covered all the grass and might have even nicked him with a goal was Nathan Sherry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I so uh, I I wonder I wonder if he had a slight fitness issue because as much as share he has his knockers and he does I I I like him and he won players player of the year last year and he's not going to win that get the vote off the players although it might be best of a bad bunch you know he's not he's obviously respected by the players and what he does and people say yeah he runs a lot round a lot and you know that should be the bare minimum but it's not the bare minimum for most of them is it. And no. he do, he does he does break the lines and get through and he does you know when he he got probably our best goal threat against Fylde on Friday, 
which is which is saying something really. Um, just but, need to uh, just need to uh, remind Oldham fan that we yeah. have won four games in a row this season. Yeah. Um, it was just before we went on this terrible run, wasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it, it, look, I'm not, I don't expect us to do it by by any stretch of the imagination. He's an AFC Oldham fan, not an Oldham <laughs> fan. <laughs> no. I, I, I just think we we all need to, if it happens by some miracle, and it won't. I think we all need to be happy that bloody hell made it into the playoffs on form, and we can all get excited. But I think we all need to be of the expectation, you know, even if we end the season well with. Six points, seven points, nine points, whatever. We that that's got to be the the thing that we take away from the end of this season. Go into it with a bit of, you know, a happy feeling, a bit like the end of last season. Um, you know, uh, yeah, that's I the thing. Think, that, I, I, don't think, I don't think that, I don't think that's right because Wandsworth, when he won all them games last season, was like, oh, well, they beat Yorval, they beat Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah, beat, I don't know who they were. And yeah, he said, fair, oh, it was, yeah, it was yeah, an easy you, run. I'm not saying you, but the negative, yeah, people. Contingent, they'll, they'll, which which have to have the right to say whatever they want because it's all about balance. We'll have them on saying we still didn't make the playoffs. So they say if we go and play, I don't know, um, Crawley because oh, we'll get we'll get Crawley, won't we? First game of the season away yeah, or whoever it may be, and we get beat two 0 It'll just be like South End all over again, and it's yeah, just going to be I, it's rinse like and repeat, think, it? You know how uh, there's a lot of comparisons being made between Unsworth and Nellen, and it's a bit direct and it's a bit negative and blah blah blah. Um, I think we can trust Mellon a lot more. He's been there, he's done that. Unsworth was unproven. He, you know, you could argue he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know his best team, didn't know what tactics he wanted to play. Uh, you know, he did he did waffle a lot in his interviews, etc. But Mellon, you know, if things are going wrong, yeah, he's going to take his, his, his uh, share of the blame and I know he would. But I think start of next season, I was last, this season I was like, I was on board, you know, right, Unsworth, Blue and White Army, etc. We've got Seem to have seemingly decent recruitment, um, but it was always in the back of my mind. If things start badly, it's going to quickly turn. But I think with Mellon, I think we've got to, we've got to get behind him a bit more and show a bit more trust than the unproven mate of the Royals, who was appointed very like you know before Shares had even left the post. You know what I mean? Mellon's been part of this long recruitment process, and he's got a great CV. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's going to be the same at the start of next season if things. I don't. Th- I don't think they can start as badly as this season. I don't. Th- they can't. They surely can't. I, I just want them to go to this like summer training. Do you know, like where Sean Dyche takes his team on an SAS yeah. training camp or something. I don't want to see him hiking in duff stones and then walking to Delft and then walking down a scout head with sandwiches every five miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I want them to be beasted on like running up bloody. I I, I, I take wherever. solace in that this preseason and next preseason. There'll be a group of lads that are there rather than, you know, think two, three years ago, team sheets for the friendlies, like trialist, trialist, trialist. We're looking at all the training photos going, who's that, who's that, who's that? We will know something that teams, when they get out of this league, they seem to have had a consistent core of a squad. And as much as we might look at these lads now and say, yeah, a lot of them aren't, aren't up for it, bin a lot of them, etc. If you're doing that, you're starting again and... Uh, it's nice that we've got some players that we've had for two, three years. Uh, that's not got... even an op- that's not even an option, mate. That's the thing. I, I see these things on Twitter. Oh, get rid of him, get rid of him, get rid of him. We'll do our squad pod uh, in a week or two and and go through all the players and see what 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 is realistic. But there will have to be a good chunk of those players in this yeah. squad for next season, and we're going to have to get behind them. And we, <laughs> you know what I mean. We're going to have to. I think that with the right players in the right positions. And players are playing comfortably, like you was. Like people have been saying about um, switching and tinkering. Players playing the right positions week in, week out, with the right backup in, this, in a formation that suits them. Then it could be a big difference because there are good players in us. In our there squad. are. There's there's players in our squad that you know, like Hobson. At, early in the season, people were saying, you know, oh, he'll be gone in January. He, you know, he'll get a league club. And he, he's gone off a bit of form, etc. But I'm glad he's still in our squad because he, he is a capable player. And I don't know if he's, uh, you know, because he's a bit, sh- uh, bit short of form and, you know, we're, we're short of form. He started pumping it long. Because on Friday, every time he got the ball, he was just pumping it long. And um, it, it just, it seemed unnecessary. Everyone was screaming. You know, you could see it was coming. But, I, you know, Hobson, yeah, he's there. Happy to keep him. If you go around the squad, a lot of those lads, you'd say, yeah, he's had a good bit of form at time or uh, he's got some, you know, promotion on his CV or whatever. So if you if you add that all together and get people in, you know, 
the right shape of team and a bit more competition in certain areas, then we'll have a decent chance, I think. It, it, it's just recruitment. I know it's obvious, and but the old star shapes and rhomboids or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, as soon as I saw Saturday, I was with my mates, not Oldham fans, I was like, oh, McGay's right back. He's not a right back. He's a mobile. They'll get him. And they did. And, it sh- you know, and it was like Kitching will be covering the whole left-hand side. We've got no width. Uh, we'll pump it long. Even going back to Hudson, Hudson's been good this season, but whenever we got the ball and he pumped it long, there's pumping it long and there's there's just literally pumping it straight down the middle. Their keeper, when he got the ball, if he went long, he's working the box. He's going from left, he's going to right. He's looking for shapes. He's looking for movement. He's waiting for the right moment. Whereas Hudson literally gets it, stays in the, in the stationary position and just pumps it right through the middle. So there's things like that where... But those kind of things surely can be coached, can't they? Given, you know, yeah. given a, you know, some consistency in the, in the backroom staff and in the playing staff and working on things and 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 Melon identifying, you know, like if you're capable of identifying things, then you know, a team of professional coaches and yeah, managers exactly. are able to identify these things, and and we can get there. And you know, you're talking about the guy playing at um, right back and stuff. He mentioned he mentioned him in his interview on um, on Monday after the game. I think there's a good chance he'll end up be getting another contract, you know, because yeah. he's if he, 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 he fancy him. To be fair to him, my guy, he works hard, and since he's got yeah. back into the team, he's put a shift. He put he talks about. Five, I'm, are you shaking your head, Dave? I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's my my view, but what I'm saying is from the manager's point of view, he feels that he can rely on him. He has worked hard. He was like he was getting. A torrid time against Far, but it didn't stop him. He was chasing and battling and trying to win the, the 50 50s when he, when he yeah. could. Um, so you know, I've, I and I think that's important to managers. Managers, yeah, want I, 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 I think he will as well. Whether or not I agree, I'm no. not decided yet. The, uh, the only reason I'd agree is you know, a bit of consistency, but we have we seem to have a lot of contracted players for next season anyway. But he was he was he was our best player on Monday. And he's playing in a defensive midfield role, which is not his position. And I think Mellon just wants him in the team somewhere. He made him vice captain before the Christmas thing. Um, and, you know, he, he was back in the team. Obviously, Muzza brought him back in for the Alti FA Cup game. But, yeah, it's I, I think he probably will as well. But, again, he needs to not have this approach of, I need to get him in the team somewhere, so I'll stick him in, you know, in the sitting midfield role or put him in at right back. If he wants, if he wants to be in, he's got to earn his, you know, corn in his correct position. Do you know what I mean? But mm. even Sutton, Sutton should be playing at centre back as well. Sutton, as much as he made the mistake on Monday, you know, he was moving about. He was, you know, he's putting the effort in. He was bringing the ball out as well. He was willing to receive the ball in like tight and wide positions. He was getting forward. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more across. energy. There's a lot more energy yeah. in the team with Sutton because he's, he's young and he's got it. Yeah. There was crossing, crossing a couple of times was dreadful. But he's at least he's there and, and getting on to the end of things and showing a bit of willing. Whereas, you know, so kick, would you have played? He, sort of, would you have played if, if you know, sat Datchev? You would have played him. You would have played Sutton over Datchev, would you? Not sure. I don't know what's happened with him because obviously he had that game, got man of the match, and he's been out since. He he was in the stands. So he travelled on Monday. Yeah, there's um, no, there's no, there's not that not cat in hell's chance. I would have played Sutton over Satchev because he, he don't play in that position now. Sutton. Got into the space <coughs> because other players weren't doing anything. Kitchen wasn't doing anything. <coughs> Conlon wasn't doing anything apart from his shot in the first half. McGee looked the best of a bad bunch because you know everyone calls out Sharon when he's bad, but he's the one who looks the good because he does all the running. But if we're going to rely on McGee and we're going to rely on Sutton for, for in a right back position in the central midfielder, I, I just think not, yeah, I, I, no I know we're not, but, but I, I don't think McGee should get a new deal. I think Sutton should be played at centre back, but I think Hobson, Raglan, and Hogan are better than him and more experienced because he makes that mistake, be it... Well, that's worth right remembering, Dave. You're right, though. McGee is playing for a contract, isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah, exactly, there are, yeah. There are players so, out there. Sutton's that... mistake is, is, was unforgivable for a professional footballer at weekend. He should have got rid of that. How he overran that ball and kept everyone on. It's yeah, yeah. one-on-one it, defending, yeah. basic defending. It's not good enough. You know, all right, he's not, he's not playing in his right position, but he's still had a job to do and he's still played right back. He's not, he, he, he shouldn't be doing that at this level. 
But you know to be I mean? fair to him as well, he's he's in and out of the team. He gets a game here, he gets a game there, and all that. So, like you know, it wouldn't do him but any. It's the manager out. putting him in that position in the, in the wrong four. place. It's the manager's fault. It's the oh, manager's yeah. decision, and that's yeah, what I'm saying. Exactly. To, yeah. You know, but he still had a job to do, and he didn't do it because he's, he's, he's all he's, over the place. He, he he obviously knows he made a mistake. You know, he he will. You know, we need told twice about it. But you know, there's plenty of mistakes by individuals, yeah. regardless yeah. of position, that lead to goals. Look at Norwood for the second goal on Friday. Exactly. You know, you know, that wasn't because he was out of position or whatever. He just fluffed his lines because he's a National League footballer. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not saying it's forgivable, but I just don't want everyone to pile in too hard on Sutton because there's, there's people that deserve the criticism a lot more. And talking about the fans without trying to go over old ground, I was in the Rochdale Road end on Friday. And, you know, even throughout the second half, the second Mickey Mounds blew my army. And it only got particularly moany at the end. You know, a lot of people left and... You talk about they turn quickly. I'm not a booer, you know. I won't have a go at the players, etc. But when you when you're three nil down against AFC filed at home, there's seven thousand people there. You you know, I I didn't expect that, but I you know, we all probably weren't too surprised. We were like, it, it's we're, we're terrible at home when the small teams turn up with thirty fans or whatever. We we just can't seem to you know. And it is you talk about it before Matt the mental side of it. It's the mentality of some of these players. Some of them have gone up and done greater things at, at clubs that are higher than us. But they've, I think the the pressure on us at the minute is massive because if they've gone up, you know, if uh, Tom Conlon's gone up with Port Vale, you know, Port Vale might have, you know, not been too fancied to go up from League Two and they did. Well done. They're all happy with that. But this massive expectation on the club for us to be up there and to, for us to be sitting in ninth, it's just not acceptable. And we need, you know, but we we need we do need to give them something rather than going down so early, so many games. You know, if we could just go one nil up after twenty minutes at a game and just relax a little bit, you know, it just changed the tone of things. But you know, they're gonna it's gonna get toxic when things like that happen, isn't it? Three nil at home against Fylde. Absolutely. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not saying there isn't a time and a place for it. I no, think I just I, think it's not. It's not every single time someone makes a mistake yeah, or like like Brad was saying, Dagenham. You know, that didn't seem to be warranted on Monday. I didn't. You know, I I I agreed with Brad. I didn't think we we're anywhere near as, as as bad as Dave thought. I thought we gave it a go, but I just felt like I just felt like we weren't going to score. Not because we weren't trying, because we just don't have it in us at the minute. There's a lot expected of Norwood. He's running the line up top on his own. Mellon screaming at him to get across to either centre back, um, and you know, there's only so much he can do. Do you know what I mean? He's got to save his save his energy for when the ball actually comes near him. Um, so. Yeah. So uh, right, uh, we're gonna to have to move on in a second, Dave. We've got two more quick yeah, calls. No but so four games to go. We it's possible, technically. Is there any chance, remote chance, that we could turn it on for the last four? Actually, Andy Andy Alliwell's been texting in the group saying it's actually seven games on the bounce we need to win if we want to go up. Uh, we don't to, <laughs> if we want to go up. We can draw we can draw you know, so what What do you think? Is there any remote chance of making the playoffs? Statistically, yes, obviously. But considering we've not won four, four in a row all season and we've not, um, you know, we can't get consistency, I think there is absolutely no chance we will go up. But I'm not cancelling my Wemby Hotel until... It- <laughs> it's mathematically not possible. Fair yeah. enough. Great call, Dave. Thanks for getting in touch, okay, mate. Okay, cheers, guys. Cheers, All guys. the best. Nice one. It's been good to have uh, some new some new callers on this evening and some new perspectives, but we, we do have a couple of uh, regulars lined up, so we'll save the best till last and we'll bring Jack in. No offence, Jack, but we'll bring you in now. How are you, mate? Hey, are you all right? I'm yes. How are you on Friday against File? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> How are you feeling after Easter? Um, all right. So, to, to be honest with you, against Altrincham, we, we could have at least nicked a point because there's two things. When McGee had that shot, we should have won in. And also, Connor received the ball in the middle, no one's around him, and no one was screaming at him to play Dallas in, and he decided to shoot. Yeah, like well, it's, it's sort of things like not making the right decisions at the right times, isn't it? Not playing the right ball, not looking up, not listening to shouts. And we, we've seen that all season. It's just little things like that where they're not like good teams, like they know, don't they, when to give it to each other and, and when not to, and they listen to each other and they're well drilled and well practiced. And we're, we're, we're just not there yet, are we? 
It's the coaching, that's why, because they're not well drilled enough. I don't know, it's obviously a serious issue. You know, the decision making is down to the coaching because they're drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled to make the right decision. You know, these are experienced players. Like Tom Conlon is no mug. Everyone says he's crap. He ain't crap. He's not a crap football, but he's, he's been captain, the winning captain of League Two for Port Vale. All right, he's had a few injuries. When you saw bits of him against Barnett when he came on, in his first well, his first game was Hendon as a sub. He didn't really do much, to be fair. He was chasing the game. When he came on against Barnett, he looked full of confidence. We, we beat Barnett. And he's just sort of got into his shell. You know, I think someone, I saw a tweet saying that when, when we started booing him, he just shook his head and walked off on um on on Monday. Now, don't get me wrong. If the players haven't done well again, it all goes back down to the boom. But he must be. Th- he said it was a big club, and it's a Melon has said about Lundstrom. It's a big deal to play for Oldham Athletic. So, I I don't, I don't know. It's got to be down. There's just a severe lack of confidence, and it's Brabin and Melon's job to get this confidence flowing again. Do you know what I mean? By Drilling him and drilling him and drilling him. Do you know? What I mean? he, he he seems like a disciplinarian because he's he's banished Reed. So he must be. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, and that's why I get so frustrated by it. What do you think, Jack? To be fair, there's a few things. I think, like you said, the passion and the world dream teams. I think it's a bit down to trust as well because I don't know. Like some players might not trust each other, and also I think it's about the confidence because I, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, on Monday there was a clip where Mel went into the dressing room and he just put his hands on the wall and just like I look like really down. If you know what I mean. Jack, if you could go into the dressing room before the Rochdale game and and and, you had, and, and give a message to the players, what would you say? I would say that's such as like, come on, lad, this is a big game. Do you want to play at this club or not? Um, do you want to go up or do you want to stay in this league? This is all for for you and for the fans out there. Do you think they are? Do you think they're doing the best and they're just not good enough, or do you think they've got a bit more to give? I think they've got a bit more to give, and I also think someone was saying before about. Um, James Norwood, he hasn't scored an open play goal, but I, I, I think if you give him a shot, he, he will score. Like he's one of them, you know. I want to call him a luxury player, but like I'm sort of saying, if there's a ball in front of him, he'll hit it, and most likely he'll score. If you know what I mean? He's he, he's one of these players. I'm talking about this over the last few games where he doesn't seem to pick the ball up, say, you know, 30, 40 yards out. And and make something happen and score. But like if you, like you say, if you, if if he's in the penalty area and you give and they get the ball to his feet, he'll probably hit the target and he'll score more times than not. But he's you've, he seems to me to be one of these players that scores goals in and around the penalty area. And we're not playing to his strengths in that in that case at all, are we? We're not giving him the ammunition. We spoke about it already tonight, but we're not giving him the ammunition that he needs to score goals because he's, you know, he's not Thierry Henry. He's not going to pick the ball up on the left-hand side and take everybody on and smash it into the top corner from 25 yards. That's not who he is, but he, he you know, he's, he's proven to us time and time again that if you, if you get him in, a, in in the right position, he'll, he'll, have, he'll have a shot and he'll score. So, We've got to get a lot more out of him. Like if we if we keep him next season, he's he's got to be firing us up to, to you know to towards the top of the league with 20, 25 goals. So it is you like you say it's if we don't, it's just a luxury signing. That he, and it's, we can't afford luxury signings. Every single player on that team has got to be got to be you know worth their place and 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 do their bit week in week out. So. It's been frustrating because I think a lot of players, a lot of fans, sorry, thought that when we signed somebody like him, it was that was going to be the difference. But unfortunately, it, it takes more than that, doesn't it? Mm. it to be honest, yeah. against Altrincham, how everyone going mad at Sutton, I, I think in his head, he, he hasn't got as much confidence as everyone uh, would think. I think if he's gone for that ball, he's going to put it in his own net. So... I think he's a bit in two minds. Uh, do I go for it? And he's got that thing in his head, like, oh, he's going to go in like he ain't got the right confidence. Yeah, maybe so. I and mean, like I said before, coming in and out of the team, you know, like that doesn't help your confidence. And I'm hoping to see a bit more, um, a bit more of an investment in some of your, the younger players next season because I think you, I think you know, so you, we said before, Dave, like consistent. Good teams are built around consistency, and there are balance between younger players and older players. And especially yeah. someone like Sutton, who's young and he's and he's you know one of our own and all that. The problem is he's not a right back. And does he get in? A, do his, does he get in above Hogan, Raglan, and Hobson, etc.? Ah, so he probably has to have to you know have to wait and see and and, and be patient. Any like like all young players are, but we we certainly need to have more young players 
in and around the squad and in and around the team than we do at the minute. We, we, we've got... Yeah, we don't have many, do we? We've had, we've had Atkinson. Atkinson was training, with travelling with the squad. Um, Alfie Atkinson was travelling with the squad against York, but I've not seen him since, and, you know, the, you know, in and around. So I don't know if that was like sort of a test or whatever. And it, you, just... I mean, you don't necessarily need to be our own players, but they need, we no. need a better balance. I mean, you're not I mean, I've, well, I've, I've, I've youth prospects, but Jeff, I mean, ideally... Side, 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 that, that Jeff, he was a young player, looked, looked promising. Walker looked promising, but then he had that horror show at Dagenham and Redbridge and didn't do much. And mm. I don't know, is, he got, is, it, is it a case of like Mellon being too impatient with the young players or thinking at the time, now is a vital period, I need to rely on experienced players. That hasn't worked, has it? No, but if at the end of the day, if Mellon looks at a player and thinks, you know what, he's too young, he's not, or he's not, he's not that he's too young, but he's not ready yet, then he's not going to waste his time on him either, is he? So, we've got to give him time to, to bring through the players that he needs at the end of the day. Now, Jack, do you think there is any, apparently, we're according to somebody on here, we're uh, 80, to, 80 to 1 for a promotion, which is, uh, <laughs> you know, that's long odds. Um, but do you think there's any chance we can win maybe three or four of the last four games? To be fair, I want to say a few things. Uh, I think, obviously, there's a chance. That said, there's a chance. Five points off. Um, who is it? Old Report, they've got a few tough games. They've got Gateshead, they got Hartlepool, and obviously, Gateshead need to win. And Hartlepool want to win, so they, they we need to hope for results. But obviously, we don't want to be in a situation where we're relying on teams to get the results. No, we've just got to win, haven't we? We've got to beat Rochdale. It, it'll, it, I think everyone will get really, really, really annoyed if we get beat on Saturday <laughs> because it's just getting beat by Rochdale alone is just going to cap it all off. They really, I think, for everybody's sanity and for like just the general mood of everything, they've got to they've got to win on Saturday. So. But, um, I, 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 just, I can't going, have them beat us. I can't. The game, if you are going to the game on Saturday um, and you, you've got the radio on before uh, between 10 and 11. Attention, Attention all, all listeners. listeners. From Shaw, From Shaw to Shulver. Crompton, Crompton to Coldhurst. Fittenhill, Fittenhill to Fellsworth. Hollywood to Haddershaw. From Leeds to Limeside. This Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Myself, Matt Dean. And me, Sexy Dave Bradley. Are exclusively live on Oldham Community Radio. Bringing you a roundup of everything all the athletic on a look at athletics. So join Matt and Dave on 99.7 FM DAB Oldham Community Radio. Jack, will you be tuning into Oldham Community Radio on Saturday morning? Yes, I will actually. Yeah, I will. It's Absolutely. A right answer. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thanks as always for getting in touch, Jack. I've got one more thing before I go. One more, mate. Um, I think um, there's some fans on fire, obviously, uh, when we went to the field, to Nudan, there there's people shouting, uh, you aren't fit to wear the shirt. And obviously it is embarrassing, but we're two nil down to Fylde. But also, on Saturday, we need to pack the park, we need to get behind Mellon. If we do lose, there's people already turning their back. I think it's do or die, to be honest. There'll be a lot more people who turn their back if we do lose on Saturday. Yeah, we need we need fans back in Bowdoin Park next season, don't we? Good, good, good point. Good, good last point, that Jack. Let's, excellent, let's excellent, mate. That we, uh, excellent. That, we, that we at least kick on towards the end of the season, starting by beating the Bin Dippers from Rochdale. Thanks for getting, thanks for getting in touch, Jack. No worries, see you. Have a good okay, one, mate. Cheers, pal. A good level head on his on his young shoulders, isn't he? Yeah, he's quite tall. He looks dead small on the screen, no, he but he's, he's, he's a, he's yeah, a, he's yeah. A, he's, he's not stopped a, growing. He's gonna be a giant. He yeah, is, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you are you there, Ribby? Evening, guys. Matt and Sexy Dave, you all right? Yeah, mate. Thanks for being so patient, mate. Yeah, thank you, Ibi. Yeah, no worries. Just very disappointed with the two bad results we've had. And I feel absolutely proper low at the moment. So we need a big win on Saturday. And uh, on our on our day, we can beat anybody, which I keep saying. But we keep letting ourselves down. And what can we say? On our day, we can get beat by anybody. <laughs> it's the opposite to on our day, we can beat anybody. And unfortunately, that's, you know, it's, I think the draws that have killed us in um, in, in March, isn't it? we've drawn four with, um, on the, you know, within that, that period of March. And, and those points just kill us. If we'd have won the, the games we'd have drawn and we still lost the others, we'd, 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 be, we'd be all right. But just, 
Yeah, I mean, you said you said last week you'd be that if we didn't win these games, there'd be serious questions about Melon. What? Where's your stance on Melon tonight, mate? Um, I would still give him a chance, but if he blows that playoffs, I'm not looking forward next season under him. Sorry. You don't have to apologise. It's just your view, <laughs> mate. But... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do, you, do you do you think it could? Sort of the hangover of not making the playoffs continue into next season. Do you think is that your concern? Uh, yes, um, a sexy day because he is had a great opportunity. <laughs> he's, had, he's had a great opportunity. Honestly, all since he's coming, he's he's only said one thing: we're going for the playoffs. So <laughs> oh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's okay. No, no, I, I, I agree. No, I agree. I think, I think we've, I think we've just because of all them fans not being able to let go and saying, right, right, this season's done. Let's move on. New, fresh start, new season. There's still many people going to be hanging on to what could have been last season. And as soon as we, you know, we get beat in that first couple of games, or we have a bit of a bad run or a dicky spell, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be. I think I just hope that it doesn't happen, but I, I can see it happening, and that's my worry. Yeah, I fully agree with that, Dave. But at least you did laugh because all week I am a laugh. <laughs> well, well, we have to laugh, don't we? As Latin yeah, fans, it's the hope that kills you. And if you don't yeah, laugh, you we've try. Not, yeah. we've not, we've not, we've not yeah. got much to smile about. And I think I mentioned it earlier, Ronnie, but that a lot of us. I've got a, a long, you know, years and years and years of frustration, you know, building up inside us. And and we just, the, the optimism of, of Frank coming in and, you know, getting, you know, the, the sense of optimism back and belief back and the fans back and everything. And all, everyone's just like, oh, finally, like we can be positive. And then, you know, it's just taken a little bit longer than, than we'd all thought. But we, we, ultimately, we think we all believe that, we'll, that we will get there. Uh, but, Football's yeah. not, it's not easy, is it? It's not an easy thing to... to it's to not see. easy, it's not easy, Matt, but I feel sorry for Frank, honestly. He's invested a lot of money in this club and if we do fail the playoffs, then um, alarm bells are ringing from, for Frank and then he needs to look, look into whether he needs to bring some experienced board members who know what they're doing or a director of football, but I'll leave that all down to the family of uh, Rodwell. But at the moment, I will support the team. It's not all lost. And we hopefully we'll beat Rochdale and hopefully go on a magic run. It would be it would be amazing if we did, wouldn't it? It would be fun. It would just be so cool if we could like you know, the team could put all this behind them and, and really come out with something special for the last four games of the season. But I don't see it. But you know, it's the yeah. it's the hope that kills you. Yeah, Matt, and also um, um, Durkin, they need few wins during a relegation battle. It's very sad to see that. Durkin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you said, I mean, think... said Durkin then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, know. I think what Sorry, I might have pronounced it wrong. No, I think, I, think what the, I think what Dawkins have done uh, to get into this division is tremendous. I think staying up last season was a fantastic achievement and you know, it, the, chances are they're just not ready for it. They're not ready for this for this level because you know, part time, one of just a few part time teams, not got much money to invest. It's if, if he managed to keep them up again this season, that would just again would just be amazing. So um, I think for for Mark White and Dawkins, it's it's a case of can they can they bounce back quite quickly from this division if they go down and 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 just keep. Yeah. Keep building he said, it. He said, he, said on, he said on another podcast he's not worried about going down because he he'll, he'll go straight back up. He knows it. He knows he's got it. In, he's got it in him, and that, and that confidence again must go through the players. You know what I mean? He, he's a very confident guy. He knows what he's on about. He knows the game. He, he knows how to set up as well. So it's just like the polar opposite of 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 us, though, Dave. In it, you know, we we we're, yeah. we're an old, well established. <laughs> continually unsuccessful football club that's been on a, on a downward spiral for many, many years. And and they, that's not what they know. They're a brand new club that only know success, that are only on the way up. It's a, like the mindset, the mentality within the camp at Dork can be very, very different to, to, to our fans, you know, to our fan base, our collective memory, if you like, where we, you know, <laughs> we've got a lot of sort of negative experience to, to call upon. So, yeah, I think they probably will be all right. I think, you know, at the end of the day, even if they even if they do go down, they're still playing at a, 
a, a high level way above anything they probably dreamed of. So, fair play. Yeah. Are you guys at the game on Saturday, both of you? Yeah, yes, yeah, man. we will be there, mate. Yeah, for our sins. I'm in the yeah. Corporate. Yeah, finger crossed we will win. We'll beat Rochdale 3 1. And yeah, no more think. typical lap takes going on a bad run. And uh, we need everybody behind the team. And then let's see what happens. 100%. 100%, mate. See. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Oh, Look after you, sir. Bye bye. See ya. Sexy Dev. Mm. <laughs>On Saturday, 18th of May, we proudly present Trophy Chess. The second annual Boundary Park Alert System Awards and end of season party. At last year's event, we presented Big Mac Bond up with his Goal of the Season Award and Joe Yanni with his Player of the Year Award. But who will win these coveted awards this year? Make sure you're there at the Cotton Rooms in Oldham at what Sexy Dave describes as... A potentially starts to be potential promotion event. With music from fantastic live band The Rays, the Latics Mind Final, interactive games varying quality prizes and all the usual nonsense last year's event sold out so grab your tickets now from ofcpodcast.co.uk forward slash shop to avoid disappointment tickets cost just £20 and this includes a very tasty pie supper mm, don't miss Trophy Chest it's not looking like a potential promotion party, is it? Yeah. That's, that's why we put potential in there. <laughs> potentially, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, we have yeah. got a guest confirmed. Oh, yeah. Who is it? Who is it? Andy Ritchie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not just a potentially star studded. Does one star guest constitute studded? It's star studded, not stars studded. So that's that's fine. And we've yeah. got plenty more in the in the ether that in I'm uh, working my way around. Dave's greasy pipeline. Mm, in the ether. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so listen. <laughs> <laughs> the sexy the sexy we're, pipeline. We're nearly at the end of Dave, sexy Dave's greasy pipeline now for the for this show. This has been a bit of an epic one minute seventeen. If you've watched it all the way through then fair play to you. <laughs> Yeah, fair and if you presented it, fair, and, uh, fair play to you. you know, yeah, exactly. So um, it's time to call it a night, Dave. Uh, I, I hope you're having a good time in Azerbaijan or wherever you are. Uh, it, yeah, it's Azerbaijan. Uh, we've just bolted down the battalion. Uh, the garrison is now loaded, and I've got guards on sentry duty. So <laughs> if any Az- Azerbaijanis want to try it. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Dave. <laughs> Azerbaijanis. <laughs> Uh, thanks for getting in touch from your holiday camp there, Dave. In where it? <laughs> Azerbaijan. <laughs> Azerbaijan. The more black sheep that you uh, swallow, Dave, the more difficult that you know, becomes. Uh, oh, you're on the no. doom bar now. Right. Okay. Thanks for watching, listening, and taking part, everybody. And uh, we'll see you for a look at Latics on Odin Community Radio on Saturday at 10 to 11. On the podcast, we'll be back as usual on um, Monday. Also, if you are free, we are, Spike Tile and my band are playing at the railway in Ryan on Saturday Ryan, Ryan, evening. Ryan, 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 Ryan. Yeah, 9.30. So if you go out uh, before the game on Saturday... <laughs> Uh, and then just stay out all day. By the time we're on, even if we're terrible, we'll sound brilliant because you'll be you'll be well wrecked by then. So uh, thanks for listening, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Boundary Park Alert System, a QPod production hosted and produced weekly by Matt Dean, Andy Halliwell and Dave Bradley. QPod is Oldham's only dedicated podcast production company and if you'd like to learn more about how podcasting can help take your brand to the next level, visit kupod.co.uk. A huge thank you goes to all those people who subscribe to the podcast on Spotify. We really appreciate you all. Please visit oafcpodcast.co.uk and click be a supporter or find the link in the show notes if you'd like to help help us fund the show it's only 2.99 per month to subscribe but if you'd rather make a one-off donation please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash oafc podcast or click the link on our website don't miss the latix football phone in every wednesday live from 8 30 p.m please visit youtube.com forward slash at oafc podcast and do hit subscribe while you are there You can also follow and interact with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok at OAFC Podcast. 
Big thanks go to Eileen Finnegan for writing our excellent weekly blog, which we encourage you to read on our website every Saturday morning, and also to Paul Prendergast for providing us with all the Latics Mind questions. The title music for the show is by Manchester DJ and producer Starion, and for more information, visit bandcamp.com forward slash red laser records. If you'd like to be a guest or contribute to the show, we would love to hear from you. Until then, see you next time.